Geek Citadel. Welcome to Bullet Points, where I list what I liked and disliked about a game, so you can take my list, compile it with others, and see if you want to rent, buy, or watch the game on YouTube. Hey, you got here just in time! For what? It's the end of the world, baby! Oh. Here we go! The future isn't quite as progressive as it should be. People can't find jobs because most services are automated by a singular computer system named Central. Humans are raised by the city and molded by it. They can either become successful or sponges trapped in the thrall of the internet. There are some high notes like acceptable gene manipulation from man to woman or woman to man, and racial hatred seems to be a thing of the past. However, zealotry, hacking, government spying, war, and terrorism have all gotten worse than we can ever imagine. Techno Babylon bounces between many distinct characters similar to the film Crash. The story revolves around the actions of a shady group of criminals who manipulate a police officer into making some questionable choices and the attempted termination of an otherwise uninteresting woman living in the slums. The mystery goes beyond those two and slips into the lives of other citizens in the city as each layer is peeled from the clandestine group. You alright? Oh yeah, just peachy. Well, I would be if that imposter would go away. I am not an imposter. I am the real Ghostman. Techno Babylon is a well-written cyberpunk adventure game with a knack for fleshing out its world via descriptive storytelling. For a game that looks like it was made in the early 90s, it comes to life with witty dialogue, interesting characters, and believable explanations of technology that would impress William Gibson. It easily articulates the impact of humans allowing technological advances to get out of control and effectively rule them. Hey, are you saying we can't do our jobs right by ourselves? I am a civic coordination AI, Dr. Regis, with a responsibility for 9.4 million inhabitants. Slander of colleagues will produce no gains for the city. Oh, yeah. It paints a picture of a future full of genetic manipulation, synthetic love, curable diseases, news outlets corrupted by corporations, and wars that are waged not just on the ground but also in the mind. If this were a novel, it could easily be a bestseller among the science fiction crowd. Charlie and the gang will interact with some interesting programs and synthetics in the city. I thought I had accidentally turned on Discworld on Monkey Island after interacting with the various wacky programs in and out of the trance. My best friends at THE always come up with great new ideas. Everything from protein surprise to nutrient blood casserole. Ugh. Don't be like that. Give them a try. Most of the characters can be outright hilarious amongst an otherwise grim world. The interactions are only highlighted by intelligent puzzle design that refuses to force us into spamming random objects. The title gives plenty of hints to allow us to look at the situation logically, understand it, and complete the puzzle. Latha can interact with terminals and drift into the trance to use programs and manipulation to hack the internet. Charlie and Max will find reasonable ways to discover clues and hack into the brains of synthetics to twist their personalities to something more helpful. As much as I love the Walking Dead series, I think this game properly demonstrates how to create meaningful gameplay while also providing us with a stimulating tale. While it's nothing like Mass Effect in terms of sheer volume of decision making, each of the available choices are not to be selected on a whim. No matter how well intentioned a choice may be, it is always countered by a consequence. You may not feel the immediate sting of what you've done, but eventually the game will let you understand the weight of it. This game doesn't mind making you feel like a terrible person after your judgment calls. What's the situation? Just dandy, my good man. Keep up the good work. Don't worry, sir. We're big and strong. We'll protect you. Oh my, yes. In the early build that I've played, I've noticed that the visuals take a jarring leap between 16-bit graphics in the trance and grimy looking pixels in the real world. I'm sure this is a stylistic choice by the development team and I respect them for it, but it comes off as a bit jarring. I also notice that characters are always speaking in the trance, but in the real world, their lips will only move in special sequences. It's a small issue that dilutes the atmosphere of this otherwise immersive city. I can't find anything else useful on it. Lau, your opinion? Max, knock that off. Sorry. There are a few bugs in the build I played, but nothing that negatively affected gameplay. I did notice that the game crashes trying to out-tab or refuses to even start if you have a multi-monitor setup. The game also stopped auto-saving on some levels, so be sure to manually save when you can. Hopefully all these issues will be ironed out by the time the game releases. 
Techno Babylon may not be a visual and technical marvel, but the story and immersive dialogue creates a believable science fiction world. If you're a fan of cyberpunk books or the classic Blade Runner film, you'll absolutely adore the detailed and brutal storyline of Techno Babylon. I recommend that you buy this game at full price if you're an adventure fan, or even if you're a person that just loves great storytelling. Technocrat and Wajedi Games did a fantastic job and I still can't believe these are the same people that made a game called Nancy the Happy Whore. For more Geek Citadel plays and reviews, check us out on YouTube, Dailymotion, and GeekCitadel.com. Also, for the PC lovers, join our group on Steam Curator. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.